Hey ladies and gentlemen, 2009 Honda Odyssey, actually to be precise, 2005 to 2010 Honda Odyssey, uh, it's mine. I'm going to bring you along on this, I wasn't going to do that, but I'm going to bring you along anyway, and we'll show you some stuff. Uh, the battery stand, got to come out, disconnect your battery. Kind of goes without saying, I'm going to go top side again here in a little bit, but that's not, that's not the point. Actually, let me undo the camera. Let me get this camera here undone. I'll figure out how. Get it off the stand. So, turn this around. Up in there. Let's see. Let's see. Where, where am I at? Up in there is a bolt that's off the battery tray. I don't know how good this is going to work, but we're going to try to set this up. I won't show you that. That's the bolt right over there. I hope the camera can see, can pick it up. I sure I don't. I can't see that little screen for one. Sorry. Here's what it is. All right. I'm going to try to get it for you. Okay, right there's one. And you see the opening right there, that's pretty standard. So you're gonna need a wobble socket or a wobble something. You know, just a regular wobble will do it, of course. You'll need something along those lines. I got the wobble sockets here, so I'm going to opt to use that. It's a 12 millimeter, at least it should be. I'm going to need a ratchet, but basically, I'm going to try to stay away from that camera. Huh, that's hard to do, but. Right like that, okay. I got that on. So the other one now, as far as the plastic, I'm not entirely for sure about the plastic. Right there is the other, okay. So now that I showed you that, I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing back up here and get this zoomed out. So I'm gonna pause you up. So here's that contraption. There's a wire bracket that bolts on here. <clears throat> there's a push lock, lock connector which I have to replace right here. And there's another one that you unclip on the other side. Those are wires that are fastened to it. But here you see them bolts. That one slips in and out. That one bolts solid. And these two on top, they're going to bolt solid. One side actually bolts, bolts fully, is fully enclosed. The other ones actually slip in. If you so want to do that, you don't have to take them all the way out. Same difference to me. It is easier to remove the air box, but I left the air box in it. Kind of fumbled around a little bit, got it all, got it all taken care of. I'm gonna pause this up, get the camera ready. So I removed the bracket. It's one bolt underneath the hose. I'm not removing these hoses, so we're gonna to have to get over that. This lifting bracket can come out. If you washer under it, you can put it back in or leave it out. It doesn't really matter. That's really just, well, put it back on. That way, if ever anything got to be lifted, lifted out, it's not going to be missing. But, you know, I'm probably not even going to replace it. I'm just going to probably throw some washers behind it and uh, put the bolts back in because obviously I keep it here. I got a shop, so it is mine. It's not a customer's vehicle. So anyway. Let me pause you back up. The starter is right there. There's a 12 millimeter for the main wire that's hooked to the bracket that we're going to unbolt. That's the B plus, the battery wire right here. That's that one. So let me pause you back up. So I loosened the bolt. So that's one. 
The other one is directly underneath it. I cannot show you this any better. I went to the control solenoids over here. There's the, the gap between the electronic part and the valve body. Stuck a screwdriver in there to hold my hose in place to get this lower radiator hose out of my way. Uh, don't kill your hose. I've got to uh, pause this camera up again. Well, I don't have to pause the camera, but I'm telling you, I cannot show you this part. There is no way for me to get the camera in, in there and do the bolts at the same time. It's nearly, it's going to be nearly impossible. So I'm just going to pause the camera up. I think I showed you. You know where you're at. So there's an unfortunate truth to this starter. That's a shim. Guys, don't skip the shim. That shim has got to go back on. It has got to go back on. You cannot, you, you have to get it, if it falls off, uh, if you're having an issue with this thing, get you a new one. They're not that expensive because they should stay on there. Uh, this starter here is not actually burnt up, but it's inside. It's kind of dirty and all that good stuff, which uh, makes it hang and it spins out. So it, maybe I'm cleaning it up. I don't know, I hadn't decided yet. But anyway, these two bolts, starter obviously sits like this. And you look at the side of the engine, you got one on the bottom, one on the top, and that's really the only thing that holds that starter in place. Well, like I said, uh, this grease in here is like really hard. Uh, I'm gonna inspect the teeth, get all that done. Take this thing apart. There's a planetary set inside. The set that starter itself is not bad. There's a planetary gear set. I'm gonna make sure that these gears have uh, uh, no wear in their bushings. And if that all works out, then I'm gonna grease it up real good and put it back together and see if I can get it to work because the starter itself is working. So. In essence, I showed you how to, or well, somewhat anyway, I showed you how to get to the, the starter right there and, and replace it. I did go ahead and clean the starter up, uh, and this was on account of it making a horrifying noise when you start the engine. The gear was following, the starter gear was following the flywheel, and therefore it making a, a horrendous noise. I mean, you cannot miss it. If you'd have heard it, you couldn't have missed it. I mean, it was loud. It was creepy. And like I said, I just literally just put the starter back in. I took everything apart uh, to do the gear set in it. I cleaned everything up. It had some hard, stiff grease in it. Um, I used high temp grease, go back in it, uh, put it on the shift forks and all that good stuff. Uh, clean the gears up. I looked for damage on the on the, there's a pin in the gears. I looked for damage there. There was no damage. It was actually all of it was in really good condition with the exception of the grease being like really really crusty. So let's see what that thing does. Uh, see if the noises are gone and if the noises are gone great. If not we're going to replace the starter. <laughs> I'm ecstatic. I just saved myself about $250. I won't put that aftermarket crap in it, so I would have had to get a Honda starter. Uh, I'm ecstatic about that. Like I said, if you had heard it before, and I guess I should have started it before, but I did not. Sorry. It was horrific. So that fixed the problem 100%. So, anyway, now reverse. Let me pause the camera. All right, while you're down there, and that's nicely exposed, throw a little bit of lubricant on your shift fork right there. Certainly ain't gonna hurt it. All right, so tidy up. Get everything, get your battery wire clipped in, get your post, post back on, put your tray in, put your bracket 
that holds the wire on the side put that back in so everything is good to go be sure to place the cover over your starter bolt so we've got all that done everything is secured the way it was and obviously we've already started it so we don't have to go uh, go do that again anyway there you have it thank you for watching like subscribe questions comments you know where to leave them We'll see you on the next one.